Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. Now we are at the very beginning of a new month and as the old saying goes, April does bring with it many, 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 many showers, but it also brings with it uh, National Garden Month, which is the month where we are encouraged to explore the beauty of gar gardens, whether that be the uh, little flowering pots underneath our windowsill or something much more expansive. Uh, so anyway, today I've put together a little list of films that all center around gardens, gardening, uh, and growing things. And all of these films are really quite lovely. They tell really personal stories, whether these be uh, films based on fictionalized scripts or documentaries. They're just quite inspiring, I think. So hopefully one of these films will speak to you, but if not, you can always check out our streaming services to see something that will absolutely catch your interest, and those services are Clevenets Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. As always, all, we, all of these recommendations are available to you entirely for free with the use of your library card. And with that, I am just going to go ahead and jump right into the recs. Okay, Let's kick things off with a recommendation from Hoopla, and that is for 2001's Green Fingers. Now, I saw this movie years and years ago, but as soon as I decided to do um, a rec list, including the theme of gardening, I knew I had to include this one. I loved this movie then, and after a rewatch, I still really enjoy it. It's both funny, it is moving, it is sad in some parts, but it's really uplifting at the end of the day. And I just love films that are able to do that with stories that I totally feel are unexpected. So in Green Fingers, we primarily are following Colin Briggs. He is a inmate at a prison where we have no idea what he has done for a good chunk of the film, but we know he's essentially given up on life. He just doesn't care how time passes. He just has no motivation, no inspiration. It's just flat land for him. And he's such an interesting character because we see this beginning point. And then as you watch the film, you see when these shifts in emotion and inspiration come and it's, it's actually really beautiful. So as I mentioned, he has no motivations at the beginning of the film. He is incarcerated at a prison where like the theme is, is honestly trying to rehabilitate the inmates. He ends up meeting a fellow inmate who seems to have made peace with himself, the crimes that he committed. He, this older gentleman gives Colin a packet of seeds and Colin ends up making these seeds sprout and grow. Even though he has no experience with gardening, he has never really watched anything like this happen. And suddenly he starts to feel more inspiration, or at least at the beginning, curiosity. And as his interest in gardening and horticulture grows, we see other inmates becoming invested in his journey and then getting involved in the journey as well. And you have, as I mentioned, these funny little moments like Helen Mirren, who is extraordinary in everything she does, plays this garden, gardening expert. And she actually is one of the people who inspires uh, Colin to really start exploring this whole world of English gardening. And her character is just is just amazing to see on screen. So you've got this inter interplay between uh, this rather elevated woman, along with these prisoners, some of whom are doing very, very intense time for some pretty horrific crimes. And, and it's just interesting to see how they are able to interact with one another. Um, there are a couple of offshoots that I think weren't really necessary to further the plot line. There's a bit of a romance going on at one point, but those things aren't really the central motivations. 
Um, Colin's relationship with the older gentleman, the character's name is Fergus, is definitely pivotal to the whole story. The way that Fergus, with his sort of zen outlook at the point when the two of them meet, is one of Colin's like guiding hands throughout this whole process. Um, of course, like I mentioned, Helen Mirren's character, Georgina, is also very pivotal, pivotal to the storyline and the growth of the different characters. Uh, and a lot of the side characters are also really, really interesting and have their own rather rich uh, backstories, despite the fact that we don't really spend too much time with them. Um, and I do have to say that the gardens are interesting and I would say believable as well we're talking about a garden that's essentially grown in a prison yard. So you wouldn't expect, you know, Versailles and you don't get that. You do get, however, really unexpected bursts of color, things that could happen, especially from someone who with an untrained eye, just someone who's looking for these little bursts of life. And, and it's, it's a believable garden. And I loved that about it. I love that it didn't get overly ornate or, super clean if that makes if, if that makes sense it wasn't some it wasn't about the symmetry it was just sort of wild electric growth and i thought that was extraordinarily well done and plotted out by the uh production team whoever did the garden design i think did it in a very smart manner uh, in a way that would catch someone like Georgina's eye, who has probably seen all these perfectly landscaped gardens for decades, and would still make sense to be inspiring for people who just wanted to see something beautiful. Uh, so yeah, I, I really, really did find this film lovely and moving. You've got an incredible cast. Colin is played by Clive Owen. Um, and what I think is one of his better performances, um, Fergus Wilkes is played by the incomparable David Kelly, an amazing, amazing Irish character actor. As I mentioned before, Helen Mirren is playing Georgina Woodhouse. And then you'll probably recognize several of the secondary leads. They play character, they're character actors who are very prominent, especially if you watch a lot of indie British film. The warden of the prison I've seen in countless movies. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's a really, really enjoyable movie. I think if you're looking for something that will definitely make you laugh in parts, but will also move you in at moments as well, definitely check out Green Fingers. It is a lovely, lovely film with beautiful gardens, but also a, a beautiful story too, I think. So again, Green Fingers available on Hoopla. All right, moving right along to another Hoopla digital recommendation, and that is for the 2016 documentary, The Gardener. This was such an unexpected gem. Uh, the Gardener follows the life's work of influential plantsman Frank Cabot. Now, while I have always loved gardens, I've always loved flowers and growing and, and watching things grow, I've never had much of a green thumb myself. I'm not particularly fa familiar with super famous gardeners like this. So I was coming into this totally blind and I'm so absolutely thrilled that I found it because it's a beautifully, beautifully done documentary. Now, when this was initially filmed, Frank Cabot was about 86 and it was recorded just prior to his passing. So when you hear him speak and when you get his recollections of all of the things he's done in his life, it's it, it's truly a full spectrum of all of his experiences. And he just comes across as someone who's incredibly passionate about what he does and what he had accomplished. Um, he, one of his lifelong goals was to create the perfect English garden. And many people believe that he managed to do that with his life's work, Le Quatre Vent, which was his 20 acre English style garden and summer estate. Now, according to the film, no film crews had been allowed to take even a step into the gardens up until 2009. And when we are traveling through the garden paths and everything via film, it it's really like you're walking into this wonderland. I kept imagining, you know, it really was sort of how I imagined the secret garden when I was a child, like just this wash of color and 
you, you can absolutely smell the earth around you when you're watching the, the screen. It, it's just so evocative. Um, the other thing I adored about this documentary was just hearing Cabot speak. He, he is 86 at this point, right? So he's been doing this for a very long time and you can absolutely tell that he has that experience, but there's also this sort of fresh glee at the same time when he discuss discusses plants and growing things. It's, it's like it's as exciting and wonderful as it was the first time he got outside into the garden and started playing in the dirt. It's, it's charming and it's inspirational and just a lovely thing to see. Now, uh, this garden was created over the course of, I guess, 75 years, which I can't even imagine a project that lasts three quarters of a century. I mean, and, and, and he discusses the changes and the, the, the things that shifted his opinions and his beliefs of what things should be in there, how they should sh grow and, and hearing him speak about it, but then also speak, hearing friends and family of his speak about him and the garden. It, it's, it's lovely. And it's just this sort of full circle tribute to a man's life. And I, I don't know, there's just something about documentaries like that, that really get to me that sort of sink under my skin and make me recall them for days afterward. And I think you absolutely will do that. Um, besides being fascinating and covering a fascinating human being, if you do love gardens, if you do love flowers, if you do love layout and design, you absolutely have to check this out simply because these gardens are ridiculous. I mean, I mentioned earlier that it was like the embodiment of every garden I'd ever read about in my life. <laughs> um, and it was just magical to, to be able to virtually walk through them. And I think that being able to be transported that way says a huge amount about the filming crew, how they're able to give you those angles catch that lighting and and all together the gardener really just is an exceptional exceptional documentary i i would recommend it highly to people who are interested in you know biographies and memoirs but also to people who love gardens who love gardening anyone who ever read a book featuring gardens and just always wanted to see that embodied in front of you check out the gardener it is fantastic and it is available on hoopla digital Okay, my final recommendation for this week is available from Canopy, and that is for 2016's This Beautiful Fantastic. This is such a lovely, chill movie. Um, there are no explosions, there's not a lot of heavy action or anything, but it's just a sweet, entertaining film. Um, I've seen a lot of different reviewers describe it as a contemporary fairy tale, and I, I think that kind of works, but I... I also think it's very much a character study. Uh, you've got your main character, Bella Brown. She is this sort of quiet, incredibly isolated young woman. She dreams of being a children's book author, but can't seem to get that moving anywhere. She works in a library. She doesn't seem to have any serious emotional connections to people at all. And she lives this very ordered, tiny life. And you can see that from her apartment when we when we meet her. Everything has a particular place. Everything is incredibly structured. And then you get to her backyard. Her backyard is the hottest mess of a garden that you could ever, ever imagine. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just sad. <laughs> it's a very, very sad space. Um, and why this is such uh, an important element of the story is that when she leased the apartment, part of the agreement she had with the landlord is that she would make the outside space a priority. She would make sure the upkeep was done. She would in essentially create a beautiful garden in addition to keeping the interior of the apartment uh, neat, tidy, and everything a landlord would want it to be. Um, things become a problem when she seems to have some issues with her 
equally reclusive neighbor, uh, this curmudgeonly widower, and the mo movie is really driven by the relationship these two have. And at the beginning of the film, it's definitely butting heads constantly, constantly. These two people, I mean, like very similar, but also incredibly different. And they can't see eye to eye on anything. They argue every time they even see each other. They are disparaging of one another's opinions. It's just, just too much. But as they grow to know one another, they, they develop a real bond and their willingness to open up to one another allows both of them to sort of start developing or redevelop relationships with the world around them. And it, and it just seems to grow. It's this ripple effect of emotion and connection. And, and it's just lovely in that regard. Again, not a big movie in any way, but small, in fact, like a, a very small, quiet film that makes a massive impact, I think. Um, it's a little bit twee, and I've seen some people compare it to Amelie, which I think doesn't quite work because Amelie is a lot cuter in that respect. I would definitely describe Amelie as twee. It's one of my absolute favorite films in the history of ever, but it's a very different movie from this. This one has this sort of calm, just this very calm vibe that I don't think we ever get from Amelie. So, so, so yeah, it's a quiet movie that is driven by a lovely little storyline, but also an exceptional cast. So Belle is played by Jessica Brown Finley, who many of us know as Lady Sybil on Downton Abbey. Uh, she was wonderful in that and, and she's just as lovely in this. Uh, you've also got Tom Wilkinson, who plays the curmudgeonly widower next door. Tom Wilkinson is always phenomenal. I don't think that I've seen him in anything where I thought, well, that was some terrible acting there. Uh, and I've seen him in a ton of movies. I mean, he's his credits are ridiculous. Um, you've got Andrew Scott in here playing a chef. Uh, Andrew Scott was Moriarty in the BBC Sherlock's. I mean, it's just so many, so many phenomenal performers and, and each one of them shines and each character has a different relationship with, um, the Bella character. It's not like, it's not like one of those stories where you go from one to the next, to the next, there's no growth, there's no change. That's absolutely not what this is. And, and watching her blossom into someone who, while still introverted, they never, they never make her be you know, an extrovert or anything, she still is more willing to be more open. And I think that's a huge deal within the storyline. And, and that's what draws, draws you in is that the small, realistic, absolutely believable kind of strides in life that she makes. And watching that is really, I don't know, I, it's, it's both entertaining and inspiring at the same time. So yeah, if you like films that are character studies, if you don't need a lot of explosions or tons of action, if you like symbolism, because while her backyard shifts into a beautiful garden, so she grows into a person who's, you know, more willing and adult uh, and, and willing to connect with people. Anyway, uh, if you're looking for something with ex extraordinary acting and a really, really good, compelling storyline, make sure you check out this beautiful fantastic. Again, it's available on Canopy. It is my pick of the week. Okay, so those are my recommendations for this week. Um, as always, if you have any other recommendations for films about gardens, gardening, flowers, anything like that, please, please, please comment with your rec below. I love hearing from other people who enjoy movies, so I definitely would be interested in watching movies about this particular topic, especially. Um, if you have any recommendations for themes you'd like us to uh, explore in the future, make sure you comment with those as well. Um, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. I love being able to put these lists together and I, I find it so fun and actually really informative to be able to comb through our digital gallery and find these movies that I really think people should be able to see and know about. Um, 
So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out this episode and tell you again, thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.